with all the conversations around AI and ML that are going on right now, it's time to start talking to the people doing it. Amit Jaikar of Fathom joins me to talk about the technology, how they're using it, and the differences with robotic process automation on this bonus episode of The Business of Tech. Amit, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. The first thing I want to know about is, is so how did Fathom identify the problem that you're working on? Well, in a lot of ways, um, this evolved because of the technology in the space. It was almost like we had a hammer and we went around looking for different nails to, to really hit with it. And that technology is deep learning AI. Um, I think the capabilities of deep learning really exploded, say, roughly five to six years ago, and specifically the applications of deep learning in the healthcare revenue cycle, which is where we sit today. So we realized that um, in the health system, whenever you go to a doctor, there are a ton of manual processes that happen behind the scenes after the patient leaves. Everything from understanding what diagnosis happens to what procedures are ordered, to understanding what which code out of the 70,000 different medical codes should be selected to understand how to build that individual. Um, so Fathom started with the goal of leveraging kind of next generation AI technology to really solve that problem and make it better for both the healthcare provider and the patient. Gotcha. So what does the Fathom solution do? It's very simple. We are a pure play medical coding automation solution. So. We take in the physician documentation that outlines exactly what happened in your healthcare visit, and we produce all of the medical codes that would be needed for that encounter to be built. Instead of having an individual have to read through dozens of pages of notes and select what they think the diagnosis or the procedure might be, the machine does all of that immediately. Okay, so define for me a little bit of like the AI, ML, like what does it mean specifically in the solution that you guys are putting together? Absolutely. So for us, when we say automation, like AI means a lot nowadays. I mean, everything, every company says they have AI. And there's, there's a broad spectrum of what AI is. There's everything from kind of process automation where uh, you're effectively a productivity tool and let's say something took an individual 10 minutes before and now it only might take them five minutes because uh, the AI tool provides some levels of recommendation to make their job easier. That's one element of AI. What Fathom is doing is not that. We're on the other end of the spectrum. We're trying to automate, we're effectively trying to be the human in this process. So for us, when we talk about our automation rates, if we do something and then it still needs to be reviewed by a human, we did not do our job. For us, it's all or nothing. It's very like one or zero, and we only get that win if we're doing everything that a human coder would be responsible to do. Okay, so how are you guys going to market with this? Are you calling up every doctor directly? How, how, do you, how do you go to market with a solution like this? So there's lots of folks who would benefit from a medical coding automation solution. It ranges from physician groups to health systems, um, as well as you know, uh, electronic health record vendors or revenue cycle vendors. These are the organizations that support the healthcare providers. Um, we're pretty agnostic in terms of who we work with. So if you have the need for medical coding, we'll work with you. So in terms of how we're going to market, it's really just going and trying to talk to the folks that have those challenges and helping them understand that a solution does exist that they're probably not used to seeing. Now, I'm, I'm kind of curious, how do you take, uh, you know, a, a data set like this and make the, the machine learning accurate enough to get to that complete binary? You know, because a lot of the examples that we're talking about now, particularly, we're all talking about chat GPT, right? Who is, who hallucinates and can be completely <laughs> wrong, confidently. You're trying to get to an absolute yes, no on everything. How's that work? So fortunately, the margin of error for medical coding is not that of maybe a self-driving car. Um, the industry benchmark is a, of, of, of good accuracy is around 95, 96%. So we only need to calibrate our model to be right 
95, 96, ideally higher, up to 98, 99% of the time. And we do that with a pretty robust proof of concept, uh, where we'll basically take uh, a large number of medical encounters and we'll run it through the model and we'll basically audit it and see how we did. It's almost like the world's blessed, best, you know, blind quiz or test where you get to actually test Fathom at scale. Does it get better the more it gets used? How, like, is it is it self-improving because of the way you're running the model? Yeah, that's a great point. We actually do ask for, quote unquote, the mistakes that Fathom makes or even just improvements over time. And we'll feed that back into the model so that it doesn't make those same mistakes the next time. So all of our clients actually see an increased accuracy as they have more and more experience with Fathom. Now, I want to ask about security because this is one of those areas where everyone talks about it. And as I went through your marketing materials, you guys talk about it in your DNA. This seems like really important information to keep confidential. How did you how did you build security into the product, you know, end to end? Oh, security is probably the basis of how we got started. You can't be working with healthcare protected health information without being incredibly diligent with who's seeing it and making sure it's being seen in the safest, most secure possible fashion. So we're SOC 2, Type 2, HIPAA audited and compliant. Um, we're so specific about access to healthcare data that even myself on my machine, my laptop, I'm not allowed to see any healthcare charts. Um, specifically, you've got to have a laptop or, uh, or a PC that is designated and has specific hardware to be able to view that healthcare information. Um, so for example, when I travel, um, if I wanted to see healthcare information, I would have to go to our office, find a machine and be able to be able to read a, a healthcare chart to code. You've mentioned, so there's specific hardware. Have you keyed it into like a physical key style device? How, do, how does that work? Well, I'm not our security officer, but I can talk to you about the, the Google Titan keys that we leverage. We have, uh, course specific laptops and PCs that have access to the uh, PHI that I do not have access to. The reason all of this is so important is that when you're dealing with individual health records, you have to make sure that it's only being viewed by the people that have permission. So for us, you have permission to view those records if we're actually trying to code that encounter in a HIPAA compliant Google Cloud, or if you're an auditor that's trying to review those records. So we have all of those functions at Fathom, but we make sure that they're very much concentrated with a select group of folks that are approved to be able to look at that information. Now, your background, you've actually got a background in with a bachelor's in economics and you've got an MBA. How are you applying those business? How do the business skills there apply to what you're doing now? So probably the biggest thing is understanding like how to actually reach product market fit and how do you actually price a solution like this. In many ways, this is a solution that's not really existed before. There's been automation solutions in terms of like rough productivity improvements, but never has there really been a solution that actually does the work a human would do. So a lot of the work we have to do at Fathom on the business side is understanding really how to price this. And of course, we have to take into account our cost constraints, um, our engineering efforts, our hosting efforts, but then understanding like what is the value that Fathom is providing and how do we optimize that value for our clients? Because the more we optimize for them, the more that we can then collect on our end. Now, as I'm thinking about this, is, is it fair to sort of say that, that this is a, that the AI and the ML is, is a feature of the overall products? Because for most of the, the, the users of this, they're not gonna ever have any interaction with any of, the, any of those components, right? It's just gonna simply do its job in the background. Correct. You can almost think of Fathom as a cloud-based 24-7 digital medical coder. So we look and feel a lot like a human. So if you hired Dave Sobel to be a medical coder, Dave might be able to come in and code for 20 different healthcare encounters this hour for you. Well, Fathom can come in and code 20 million medical coders again encounters for you that hour. So we do the same type of work as that person, but we're just scaled 
a million times. I'm going to throw out a premise and get your take on it a little bit. So I've had a lot of conversations with people in the robotic process automation space. Uh, this kind of feels like it rhymes, like it's sort of in that, that same space. If I said Fathom is in the robotic process automation space, what would be your take to that? Uh, I would have to disagree with you. While I do think that RPA or robotic process automation is incredibly valuable, specifically in the healthcare revenue cycle back office space that we operate in, it doesn't really have the same applications. So RPA is very, very good at, very, at understanding structured data and ensuring that the right decision trees algorithmically can be decided upon. Because RPA is inherently based on building specific rules through analytics or through analysts in order to make A, convert A into B. And it effectively does the job uh, a human would be, I do, at a very simple level. What medical coding is, is something that's much more complicated than what an RPA tool can do. Because of physician language, the amount they can equivocate, uh, the amount of documentation formats that exist, how frequently medical coding guidelines are changed by the centers of Medicare and services. Because of all these variables, you can't create an RPA bot that can actually code for you. Um, things would change on a daily basis, and when things change, an RPA bot cannot handle that level of variance. Otherwise, you'd have to keep changing the rules on an hourly basis. So you need a much more scalable and much more human technological approach. And that's where deep learning AI comes in, where it effectively emulates what a human would do. And the way it's able to emulate that is because of mountains of training data that it's learned from. Fathom has been trained on just over 400 million coded encounters. So basically the model has taught itself how to code, makes it seem so much. So imagine you take all that experience and you have a neural network that really understands the nuances of physician equivocation, and documentation formats, you get the type of scalable approach that most healthcare organizations are really looking for nowadays because they just don't have the bandwidth to like constantly be changing rules a day. Gotcha. Okay, that makes sense. And the, and the distinction uh, by asking it that way helps me understand a little bit. So kind of as, as we, we think to the future, what kind of, of integrators or implementers are you at Fathom looking to work with? So we... We like to work with individuals or organizations that understand healthcare data. So really being able to plug into kind of the healthcare electronic health record or the billing system to make it more kind of seamless. Um, as you probably know, in healthcare, nothing talks to each other. All the systems are in different um, instances or different formats, and that's fine for our model because we're pretty format agnostic. But we'd love to live in a world where interoperability, which is the ability to kind of like interact together, is more seamless. It would really reduce the friction to kind of get up and running and deploy Fathom across uh, really the entire healthcare landscape. Gotcha. Well, if somebody was looking to, to learn more and get more information, how can they reach out? Well, we have a very simple email address. It's amit at fathomhealth.com. So A-M-I-T at fathomhealth.com. And they can always reach me there. Awesome. I mean, thanks for joining me today. Appreciate it. Thanks again, Dave. Thanks for your time and attention. Time is a finite resource, and I really value you giving me some of yours. If you like this video, you can let me know with a like of the video, and even more valuable, hitting the subscription button. My content is all free, and I use metrics like subscriptions to pay the bills, so it has real value. The content here is produced under ethics guidelines posted at businessof.tech. If you're interested in more content like this, you can get access to content early via our Patreon at patreon.com slash MSP radio. It's our give what you want model where you set the value of what you think the content is worth. If you like this podcast, you can catch it daily as the five minute news and commentary show, The Business of Tech. Available on all your favorite podcatchers with links at businessof.tech. Just hit that big blue button to subscribe. Again, thank you for taking time out of your day to listen, and I really value the interaction. If you want to say something in the comments, I do respond and watch all that, and I look forward to talking to you next time.